Serious, the ascent of billionaires is a symptom and outcome of an immoral system that tells people affordable insulin is impossible but exploitation is fine, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. What are your thoughts on this? If you want to get a little more outraged, Sir Frederick Banting, Canadian, gave away the patent for insulin so that it wouldn't be expensive. He is quoted as saying, insulin does not belong to me, it belongs to the world. We as the world have the power to take it back, and to do so, we need to stop valuing wealth and accepting the commodification of everything of normal or acceptable. As a society, we've spent decades disproportionately admiring extreme wealth instead of reacting with the disgust unchecked greed and excess should attract. Perhaps we've always been this way. Perhaps we began to career out of control when we adopted a greed is good mindset. But collectively many of us don't just admire wealth, we worship it. We salivate over celebrities, we see people with endless riches as impressive, clever, powerful and admirable. Of course, it's not as simple as money is bad and the ultra-rich are bad people but the mindless pursuit of more has all but become who we are as humanity. We've allowed for the creation of a society, and we've voted for policies and governments that have consistently benefited the very wealthy, to the point where many people defend this because becoming rich is their dream, their ideal of what a successful, valuable person is. Many live with the delusion that they are going to own that super yacht someday. They delude themselves into thinking Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and people like them earned their money, which is utter fantasy, and that they can get there too. Conversely, many suffer with an all-pervasive sense of failure because they have not reached some unreachable, intangible benchmark of success, because we've moved away from placing value on the pursuit of art, knowledge, innovation, curiosity, being, family, friendship. We measure success by monetary worth, and we deride the jobless, the struggling, as less than or faulty, as stupid time wasters and non-contributors to some distant boss's millions. As the overwhelming majority of people have seen their income stagnate for decades, as their standards of living slide, as the people who work at Amazon have to pee in bottles and have little health care cover etc., and earn a pittance, a less than living wage, we see CEOs earning insane orders of magnitude more than their workers despite doing little more actual work and we go along with it. We're wowed by it instead of revolted and angry. People kiss the asses of the Kardashians, the influencers, the heirs and heiresses, the socialites of the world, so warped is our viewpoint we take a person, say a socialite, who had more money gifted to them than they could ever spend in 10 lifetimes, and praise them and value them, yet many view the homeless, the struggling artist, the immigrant, the refugee, the single mother, the person on welfare, the sick, as worthy of scorn, as parasites, as drains on society. What the F have we become? We watch as mega corporations destroy our planet for the profit of the few, I mean, how do we live in a society where planned obsolescence is still a thing? Where fast fashion accounts for about 8% of the world's emissions and fashion mega brands literally burn billions, trillions, in unsold clothing to maintain the value of their bloated brands. We praise billionaires as they drastically increase their wealth during a pandemic where billionaires reopen factories and their workers become infected and die because hey, we can't stop them adding a few more tens of billions to that pile of gold. Those essential workers struggling in supermarkets, who cares about their lives, right? We need to support these corporations, meet their demands for handouts, sorry, bailouts. Because we think, that wealth's going to trickle down someday. Because our policymakers have, been so irrevocably bought? Because we're one day closer to that super yacht of our own, just 10,000 more years of work at average wage and we just might get there. Because we've turned everything from housing to health to education into a some sort of endless, dystopian pyramid scheme. It's a form of societal Stockholm Syndrome and if we want to see change, we need to wake up. And we can wake up. All it takes is a shift in our collective attitudes to begin pushing us back in a fairer, more equitable and reasonable direction. This is not okay. And taxing the rich is where we start. Instead of admiring the money, we should admire the value a person brings to the rest of us. I think more and more people are beginning to see this. Look up Dan Price on Twitter. He is always pushing for wealth equality and exposing corporate greed. It started with his own business. His business is one of the very few that were okay with not charging my restaurant some minimum amount of money while we were closed due to COVID. Celebrities. 
Agree with all of this, but the issue isn't most celebrities, albeit with many exceptions like Bono and the Kardashians. The majority form what's called the labor aristocracy, in that they still make money mostly by selling their labor on the market rather than by owning the labor of others and exploiting it. They do very well for themselves, but they're still workers. The issue isn't your average famous actor, musician, or athlete, it's billionaires who own important services and manufacturing capacity, because their wealth translates to unelected political power, which they then use to steer government against the masses in favor of themselves, for example pushing for decisions like Citizens United. The solution is to organize workers again. If we withhold our labor, eventually they have to capitulate to our demands. This needs to be paired with political entryism, knowledgeable workers taking over existing political parties, Ock and Bernie are examples of this, as are the many DSA members winning down ballot elections, to avoid capital flight, companies moving to poorer countries to save on labor, by ensuring capital controls are put in place, i.e. measures that simply don't allow companies to get up and leave that way. This is the only thing that's ever worked in global north countries, and it's what launched the New Deal era. We need to wake up. This is thankfully already happening. If you posted this 10 years ago you'd have been buried into the ground and yelled at by a bunch of tech bro fanboys. Now it's a mainstream opinion. So I'm actually pretty hopeful. And ironically, aren't actors organized in a union that has fairly decent powers? I 100% agree with you though, we need mass unionization of working peoples. And ironically, aren't actors organized in a union that has fairly decent powers? Yep. And that demonstrates just how powerful labor organizing can be. As a type 1 diabetic, this is very close to my own personal experience. I was diagnosed when I was a baby, just 1.5 years old. So I've lived with the condition for my entire lifetime, essentially. Many people are unaware of what type 1 diabetes actually is, so I'll give a basic rundown just FYI. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition in which the immune system targets and destroys the cells in the pancreas that produce insulin, beta cells in the islets of Langerhans. Insulin is a critical hormone that allows the body to metabolize glucose for energy. An untreated type 1 diabetic will die within a couple of days, without insulin. Contemporary insulins, Humalog, Novolog, and Lantus, etc., have been around for decades with only minor tweaks to the production of those insulins. The price for a 10 ml vial of Humalog or Novolog was around $20, over the counter, without insurance. Those same insulins are now priced at $300 over the counter, without insurance. That's an astronomical price increase without any major change to the formula or production method used. I may be off the mark here in just talking about the price of insulin and not talking about billionaires, but you don't need billionaires to understand just how ethically bankrupt our systems are when a product like insulin which is necessary for survival is priced at a point of such staggering profit. It costs something like $6 to produce a 10 ml vial of life-sustaining insulin, which is then priced at $300. People die because they can't afford to pay that. It's just wrong. Agree with you. My son is type 1 diabetic. His insulin prices keep going up since his diagnosis in 2003. He has to pay a small fortune just to stay alive, each month. All of this on top of what regular people have to pay, mortgage, car insurance, electric bill, water bill, etc. This is not something he can just go without, he will literally die. Do you know the terror of knowing, if you don't have the money, you have a high chance of death. Disgusting, and disturbing. My art professor was type 1 and he was having to ration his insulin, this man made more than the average person and still was unable to afford these astronomical prices. I hope he is okay, I haven't seen or heard from him since the start of the pandemic. And no real way to find out because I had to drop out of college to pick up a second job during the pandemic. There's a story about a grocery store manager who still couldn't afford his insurance's insulin and was rationing it out. He tried to start a GoFundMe. He died. And yet people still think America has the best healthcare system in the world like it's no effing use to anyone if you die due to debt after. Edit, some stupid Americans still think. I've honestly never heard that we have the best healthcare system. I've heard we have the best healthcare facilities slash specialists. Our system sucks. We just hit our annual deductible because my wife has an autoimmune disease that needs maintenance. As a result, 
I can actually consider things I need because cost isn't as prohibitive. Imagine if everyone could get treated for the things they need without having to consider cost. We'd have a healthier nation and more robust workforce. I've had a large handful of co-workers argue with me about the USA healthcare being the best but I realize this is anecdotal. Also, I feel you my mom said that was the best part about me being hospitalized for a suicide attempt a year ago. We met our deductible. Our specialist standard of care is top-notch. But most people need primary care for 90% of their health needs, and that's where we fail big time in cost. I've never had to depend on insulin but I do have to take anti-rejection medicine every 12 hours for the rest of my life or else I will die, and it is expensive as hell and it used to be worse before there was generic tacrolimus. I remember losing my job and it was a devastating blow, I was desperate to get my medicine and it cost over $3,000 for a one-month supply. It's no way to go through life. If everyone had experienced what I've gone through in my life there wouldn't be a question in their mind whether healthcare is a right or privilege. We need to pool our money and take care of everyone regardless of their financial status. Does your hospital have a social worker? I am in the same boat but due to my lower income, I am supplied in Varsis and sell SEP by the manufacturer at no cost. Yes precisely, this is what I had to do too. What happens if you miss the medication for one day? Rejection of the transplanted organ. It happened to me once before. I had to get infusions of IV steroids to get it under control. If you can't get the rejection under control, your body mounts an autoimmune attack against the transplanted organ and you can die of that. I'm fortunate enough to have no medical conditions, that I'm aware of, when it comes to voting time, I support legislation that benefits those who do suffer. Why? Not because I had to go through it to understand, but because it's just the goddamn right thing to do. I'm puzzled by the fact that so many can't seem to grasp that idea, just do what's right. We live in a society where about a good half or more will not accept the idea of being kind to others, where the only ideas that are considered worth exploring are the ones that explicitly benefit them. As it has been for thousands of years. I'm just amazed that after all this time, we still tread these same dusty roads, kicking the same old cans, and still have no effing idea where it is we're headed. One of my favorite quotes about politics, if you're struggling, vote for a better life for yourself. If you're doing quite well, vote for a better life for others. It's really that simple. We are all humans. Golden rule and all that jazz. USA spends 18% of GDP on healthcare, similar single-payer countries pay 12%. Pay less for better healthcare is a no-brainer, unless your objective is genocide. Or profit. My brother has a medication that has a cash price of $5,500 per month. A system that says that it's okay to charge an 18-year-old $5,500 a month so that he isn't walking around in excruciating pain literally crafting bloody diarrhea, and that is justified because it's in the interest of the shareholders. Hey, fellow Humira buddy I'm guessing. Maybe Enbrel. Blows my mind that my med costs more than I make in a year. Humira. No joke, his first pill he didn't take right because the directions were confusing, then my parents had to argue with insurance company forever to get them to cover a replacement. It's all effing insane. I was in the same boat, I take a daily medication that is still on patent, until 2026, so it costs $1,300 per month. I'm still trying to get $1,800 reimbursed for my insurance for paying 1.5 months out of pocket unnecessarily. It was one of the worst feelings of my life, after fighting so hard to stay alive, this was the thing that was going to kill me. I'm now intentionally working part-time so I don't lose access to Medicaid, as my Obamacare package didn't cover the medication. We need socialized medicine yesterday. Yes exactly, sorry you're going through it too. The problem with accumulating wealth at any cost is that it's an extremely short-sighted view. Corporations think in quarters rather than decades or centuries. I'm not advocating for the Soviet brand of communism or whatever China is doing this week, but we need some long-term thinking that includes the good of the world and humanity in general, while also understanding that people are individuals, not cogs in a machine. Also, monopolies need to be broken up and dealt with harshly. No business wants to compete with anyone else, every business wants to become a monopoly and corner the market. That's why there need to be safeguards. 
companies need to be made wary of becoming a monopoly that might force them to engage in some fair practices and care about consumers for a change. I think it would be really interesting if the U.S. clarified that a CFO's fiduciary responsibility was to the whole lifetime of the company and not just the current time. Then they couldn't shoot down ideas by saying it's not financially responsible. Consider an example, let's say the CEO of a Fortune 50 company wants to publicly endorse a carbon dividend plan to fight climate change. Someone in the business runs an analysis and finds it might cost $500 million per year. The company makes $12 billion in profits, but even then, $500 million is a lot of money. The market wants companies to grow by 4%, annually, not endorse plans that will lose 4%. The CFO says that she can't endorse, because as the fiduciary of the company it's irresponsible. However, it's probably just 30 years time until the company will be paying $500 million because of climate change. And without some action, that cost will grow to $1 billion in inflation adjusted terms in 60 years. Over time, the CFO would save the company more money by endorsing the dividend program. If she saw herself as a long-term fiduciary, she might be able to endorse the plan, put another way, she'd have some cover to explain to the market why the company must take the action. Even if it costs the business annually 5B from climate change, it still would not be worth it because it is in 30 years time. The 500 meters saved could have been invested somewhere. There is no guarantee that climate change will be mitigated just because the company did all they could and spent 500 meters. For all they know, their competitors could be doing business as usual and they just shot themselves in the foot. The only way is to for the government to give companies a push, financially through carbon taxes. Relying on goodwill is retarded and doing acting out of goodwill is equally retarded for a company. Goodwill only makes sense if there are benefits associated with acting that way. I think this is a product of the mindset that government exists solely to serve business, when that's not the case. Ideally, government should balance society for business and for citizens. Basically manage navigating the short and long term to keep that country thriving. It feels like every year the notion that government is for making jobs and serving business grows. And that results in short-term decision-making dominating. Doesn't help that officials basically have to spend time and money marketing themselves in order to keep their posts, taking them away from actual duties. I'm not sure there's any point in including business in that equation at all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.